My involvement in animation started when I was probably about seven years old, to be truthful. Uh, I saw Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs at a theater in my hometown in Texas. And I remember telling my brother, I was seven years old, and I said, I want to learn how to make my drawings move like that. And from that day forward, I focused my life on trying to learn about animation and everything I could until I eventually ended up at Walt Disney Studios. So uh, my education and uh, life with animation is truly my entire life. My name is Kelly Asbury. I am a director in the American animation industry. Uh, I've directed Spirit, Stallion of the Cimarron, Shrek 2, Nomeo and Juliet, and most recently Smurfs The Lost Village with Sony Pictures. So, I've worked a lot of places in the last 35 years. An animation director or a director of an animated feature is involved in every aspect of the production from the very beginning until the very end. The director works with the script writer as the writer and the story team come up with the story, which can take one to two years sometimes, depending on the movie. Then. Uh, the director is involved with taking that story and translating it with the editor into a story reel and shaping the movie. Then the layout team needs to know what the camera angles need to be. The director's there to say that. So essentially every step of the way for what can be five or more years, a director of an animated feature follows every step of the creative process all the way through the mix, the sound mix, all the way through the color timing, all the way until the final print and the credits roll. The director is there making sure that everyone knows what the vision is and, and what everyone needs to be doing to create that vision as a team. I grew up in uh, Beaumont, Texas, which is a small city way down in the Gulf of Mexico near Louisiana, so very far from Hollywood. Um, when I was in high school, I wrote Walt Disney Studios and asked if I could find out how to work there. And they told me about California Institute of the Arts in Valencia, California, which is known as CalArts. Um, I eventually was accepted to that school, uh, went to uh, college there, um, studied for specifically for animation as an artist, and uh, then was hired by Walt Disney Studios in 1983. Uh, and that was pretty much the extent of my education up to that point. The rest of my education continues 35 years later as every movie teaches me something new. Usually I, along with my producers, and usually the head of a studio, will have some voice, of course, in who gets cast. But the way we like to do it, and certainly my favorite way, is we play several different voices for each character, and I tell the casting director not to tell me who it is. And sometimes you can hear who it is and sometimes not, but I try to pay attention to what's right for the character. For instance, if you're casting Shrek and you listen to different voices, you think, okay, let's try this, let's try that, and someone like Mike Myers is cast, and then he ends up helping create the character by adding the Scottish accent. Sometimes I wish I had just one day to feel like a real ogre again. So you never know what you're gonna get when you cast a movie, but you know the voice quality and the sense of the voice coming out of that character, so you listen for that. Um, it's, it's a fun way to do it, and you sometimes are surprised with what you end up with. The music in any film is really a character in the movie as well as the characters. Just like the color and the camera angles, everything supports the emotion that's going on on screen. Music is one of the most important elements of the emotion in a movie. So I try to find a composer whose work symbolizes what I'm watching on screen and seems to support it correctly. In this case, with Smurfs The Lost Village, uh, I met Chris Leonard's 
who was a wonderful composer. He's newer, he's younger. And so he was able to bring a freshness to the movie that I wanted and also the emotional quality. So emotion and music are almost synonymous with an animated film. Two days ago, I saw someone who looked like us. That's impossible. And they dropped this map. What if they were never alone? If there really are other Smurfs out there, we need to find them. What if this means the Lost Village isn't a legend? Whoa. Now you're talking about maps and mystery Smurfs. What's going on in here? None, None of, of your, your business, business, Nosy. Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron was actually made in a 70 millimeter format. Um, but 185 sort of gives you the illusion of 70 millimeter to a degree. It gives a widescreen illusion. It's not really widescreen, but the, the longer the horizontal vision, the more of a scope the film seems to, seems to take on. Um, it's very common, at least in America, to do a standard film is usually one to 185, and that's usually how the studios want to do it. Just most screens and most theaters accommodate that the best. Um, but artistically, it is a wider format or the illusion of a wider format, which I think gives a bigger scope to the project. And it's a challenge to, to do an animated film in that widescreen, especially that film was drawn. So the flat colors, it was a real challenge to see how we could make that work. It hasn't been done too many times. Sleeping Beauty was widescreen. I think The Black Cauldron was widescreen, but uh, Spirit was uh, the first one we did at, uh, at DreamWorks that was in a widescreen format. And it, it, was, it was a challenge. Sound, you know, you need, I don't like too much dialogue if I can help it. I like films to play silently, but you need sound to support what's going on. The explosions, the laughter, the quiet, the bugs in the background, the crickets. You want to create an atmosphere that's all encompassing for the audience. And you want the audience to be involved in the story and to be sort of taken into this world. Sound is a huge part of that, especially the better the sound technology, uh, the better the movie, I think. Usually I confer with my sound engineer, the person who's doing the, the sound mixing, uh, and they will say what they think is best. I prefer the 7.1, but sometimes it depends on budget. It depends what the studio wants to do. Everything's a little different. You know, in Hollywood, you never know how much money they're going to give you. Uh, so in some cases, we do 7.1 and sometimes 5. But um, mostly, if it's a good sound engineer, it really doesn't matter that much. If, if they've done a good job and the crew has done a good job, you, you really can't tell. I'm working on a couple of things that I'm pitching to the studio, to Sony, uh, and I'm looking for my next gig. I'm looking for my next directorial effort. We'll see what happens. Um, these animated movies, they take a long time. And so it's hard when you're working on an animated movie to spend a lot of time looking for your next project. So I'm taking a little bit of a rest and then I'll move on. <laughs>